Greetings, my name is Billy Strange and welcome to Tony Stewart Sprint Car Racing for the PC. So yes, this is the PC version. I've put in roughly 10 hours so far. I've pretty much hit everything this game has to offer, minus the online multiplayer. I went in there, there really wasn't anybody around. Doesn't mean that there's no one around now, it's just at the time I didn't really find a whole lot of people in there. If there's something amazing going on in multiplayer, I'll do a follow-up video. Otherwise, this is everything else. Before we get going, I am going to list a few things. First off, this is my experience with sprint car racing. Those of you not familiar with myself or my channel, I did race 360 and 410 wing sprint cars for years. I'm very familiar with them. I also helped develop iRacing's first iteration of dirt. I was one of the major players in there, uh, getting the sprint car portion dialed in. Didn't get everything that I wanted in there, but it gave it a good platform. But for transparency's sake, I have not been involved since the beginning of that particular content in iRacing. But I do understand what it's like to try and develop something like this. I also know what it's like to drive one of these cars, be very familiar with these types of cars. So I understand that this is not a simulation. I am not asking for it to be a simulation. Therefore, I'm not reviewing it that way. But just understand, if and when I do levy criticism at this title, it is a critique and it is to hopefully in future iterations just improve upon the base that they have because I do hope Monster Games did sell enough to get another shot at making titles like this because we've been starved for dirt track racing games for a while, especially on the console side and something obviously not as expensive as iRacing. One last housekeeping item, if you do end up liking the video, please click the like button. If you're new here, welcome, consider subscribing, and then hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos and live streams. All right, now we've gotten that out of the way. How this is gonna go is I'm gonna go through the options. Some people don't like that, but I think options are important. The settings are important and relevant. If you don't like that kind of thing, I will put a timestamp where you can skip to the actual driving and content portion of this game so i'm just going to go through this we'll start with the options all right now we're in the options we're at gameplay you can see we have a few different options here car identifiers on and off you have difficulty presets you can change ai difficulties you can either do preset or individual with a custom ai difficulty i found 102 to 105 to be uh, my sweet spot when the cars are fully upgraded in career mode or you're running a single race or you're running your championship series. Uh, it gets a little more tricky in career mode when you've got to upgrade the cars. We'll talk about that later. A uh, damage there there is some options for damage. Really, unless you plow the wall or something like that head on, uh, you really don't suffer much damage with the cars in single race and career. Again, this means a little more when you're building up your cars in career mode. Again, we'll talk about that later. Race length, obviously, we have preset distances. That's perfectly fine. And then you can say how strict you want the yellow flags, which is nice. All right, into driving. You have your driving aids. This is very reminiscent. In fact, it's pulled right from the NASCAR Heat Series, which they were a part of, used to be a part of. So you've got all your sys there, your AI settings, again, that comes from the heat series. So you can change your skill range from wide to narrow. Again, great options for those of us that are single player racers. Uh, stability, this is a nice option. All, all things that I said in Heat 4 about how you can change how the AI runs against you and the way you interact with the AI. So all this is really nice, just like I said in Heat 4. We get to controls, you're going to tell it what the range of your, your wheel is. And then you can change the driving effects. I found it interesting with my Fnatic V3Is. The vibration would come through the wheel or the pedal base 
because it's got that little motor on there for the ABS. It actually utilizes that when the, the skid effect after it's a novel idea. After a while, I turned it off. Not a big deal. I'm glad it's in there. Force feedback. Uh, force feedback is nothing to write home about, but it does the job. And we have to remember that these cars uh, have a lot of travel and suspension. So when you're on the throttle and it lifts, you're not going to feel a whole lot in the steering wheel as well. Anyways, you're just not going to. Where you feel it is if you're off the throttle or you've really compressed the car going into the corner. Otherwise, the instant you get on the throttle, it's going to lift that front end. You're going to get a fairly light wheel. So you're going to have to get used to that, but you can dial it in somewhat to your preferences. Again, we have dead zones. You guys spelled brake. <laughs> you guys never fixed your brake spelling error in dead zone, by the way. And then sensitivity, all good things to have four wheel. I don't know if it supports direct drive wheels. I have no way of testing that. But again, Thrustmaster TSPC Racer and Fnatic V3i pedals. You can change your input mapping, which is really nice. All right, on to display. Now it's a plus that it supports my ultra wide. So thank you. But everything else on here is so basic that if you're suffering from poor frame rate, you're not going to get a lot of help here. Uh, you can just, it's very basic, anti-aliasing, on or off. Uh, I took Bloom off. I'm not a big fan of that, but there really isn't a whole lot here that helps you. Uh, I don't know if it supports triples. It might, it might not. There's nothing really here that tells me if it does, and I don't use triples. Uh, the other thing of note is I don't notice a lot of motion blur on here, but it would be nice if the option was there because your eyes don't do that. They, they don't perceive motion like that so just give us an option to turn that off or on again not a big deal because i don't see it but it'd be nice if it was there one of the major things to note though is in car it does this shaking effect and especially with the rock screen on there it's very off-putting your eyes don't do that i get that it's supposed to be immersive but coming from a person that raced on the dirt in a sprint car that used a rock screen, you don't see things like that. You don't get this shaking of the camera. Why don't we have an option? For those people that really like it, you can leave it on. But for those of us that know that our eyes don't work that way, uh, your eyes are in fluid. They, your eyes are amazing. They actually filter out a lot of that stuff. And the only time I've ever had things shake on me is when I like I bent an axle or really packed one of the wheel like bent a wheel packed one of the wheels full of mud that kind of thing other than that you don't see the shaking that it's showing you here it's it's just off-putting because you're on a 2d plane i would also like for there to be an option to take the rock screen off i raced with the rock screen you don't actually see the rock screen it's kind of funny when you're racing but because you're not in a 3d environment the rock screen is actually very obstructive in how you're trying to view what's going on so again option for those would be very nice uh, now we're into audio i turned the announcer down all the way because after about four races he's repeating the same things over and over i get it probably not a lot of room there to do a whole lot with but when i'm racing and he's talking about improving the facility and that kind of thing like i why would that be a thing like just give me some call outs for where i'm at in the race and finishing position, that's fine. Other things, it's kind of annoying. So I had to turn it down. Uh, I would like some more options for audio as far as like engine noise, opponent noise, those kind of things. It just is a little more informative, but I get it. This is a $30 title. They probably didn't have a whole lot of time to develop this. So maybe that's something we could implement, hopefully again, if they get another shot at making one of these. But this, look, all this stuff again is pretty much ripped from the Heat series. One major thing to talk about here, and I don't know why they keep suffering this fate, but the engine sounds aren't even close. They're not even in the ballpark. They've had the same problem with the Heat series. Um, so this is what a TQ midget is supposed to sound like. And then this is what we get. Now this is what a 410 should sound like. And then this is what we get. So 
So look, I'm not asking for super high fidelity uh, audio sounds here, but what I do want is something that's in the same ballpark. You don't have to have it be like, again, super high fidelity, but let's at least give an idea of what these cars sound like. Uh, this is part of the experience. It's part of the immersion that goes into this experience is having a nice engine sound. It doesn't have to be top notch. That's not what I'm looking for, but at least kind of make it in that ballpark. All right, next up, we're going to go on to my cars and my driver. These are options to change the look of your driver and your cars that you're running. I like this. There's not a whole lot of options here, but it's nice that they are in here. So we've got about three to four paint schemes, again, very basic, but you can really get into different colors. So at least you have something to make it a little bit unique to yourself. Dear God, why do we have small numbers? I don't understand the affliction with not putting in large numbers, numbers that cover the tail tank, numbers that cover the sideboard of the wing. Give us two options at least for the wing itself. You can put a small or you can put a large, but it just looks odd. These are visual things that don't have to happen. And speaking of visual things, the 410, there's scaling issues with the car models in here, but it's most notable in the 410. It looks like they actually got the wing size off of like maybe a 305 or something because the support braces are not in the right spot, so it makes me think that maybe it's like a 305 wing, but they're not offset. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. They're just like the right side panel doesn't look big enough. It's just weird looking, and I just don't understand. You've gone through the process and the tedium of trying to recreate a car. This isn't, they didn't try to make it cartoonish. They tried to give us a good approximation of what the sprint car looks like and some of it they've done really well and then other things like the wing here and the tail tank looks odd too it's the like proportions aren't right the way it sits on there is a little odd uh, the right rear almost looks like an asphalt tire uh it, it and the front tires kind of look like balloons it's just there's some scaling issues and again it doesn't have to be perfect but let's get it closer than this. It just seems like a waste of time to put all this effort into it and just not have it look right. All right, let's move on to the handling model. What happens here kind of highlights my issue of what was happening in the heat series with the dirt late models. There's a lot of left rear drive. I never once had any fear of the car spinning out on me. Not one time. I never spun it in this game at all. And I get it. This is arcade, so we're making it so that people can make laps. Perfect. Awesome. The problem is, for a dirt track game, you're supposed to be able to cross it up. In other words, you're supposed to be steering into some of the slides, especially the non-wing cars like the TQ Midget and the 305 non-wing Sprint car. You should be steering into it. And not once did I ever actually steer into, back the car in, do any sort of counter steering into the corner that kind that just along with the visuals again this is presentation this is part of the immersive process we're supposed to be kind of getting people into dirt track racing and part of it is sliding sideways and getting it crossed up and feeling that rush of making it through the corner and having the car squat and accelerate coming off of the corner that doesn't happen here with any of them i know this is not simulation we could make it though that there's still that left rear drive, but that we're counter steering through and, and coming off of the corner, straightening the wheel out then. Uh, so the, the handling model is odd. On top of that, the TQ Midget and the 305 non-wing spur car are really boring. The tracks, it's nice that there's a ton of tracks in here. We've got what, 20 some odd, I think it's 24, something like that tracks in here. Most of them are too wide, not all of them, but a lot of them are too wide. And where it is really noticeable is that they shove the TQ midgets and the 305 cars on some of these tracks, and there's just too much room. Those, especially the TQ midgets, don't really drive on really big tracks. They're fairly narrow. They're, they're meant to be a much more entry-level position into the sport, and they would benefit from a smaller title track that you back... Uh, smaller tighter track 
that you would back the car in going into the corner and cross it up and then straighten the wheel out coming off the corner. Uh, you don't get that here and it makes, in my opinion, doesn't matter in career mode it's worse, but just a quick race or a championship, it just makes it really boring. Now I get it, there was probably some sort of an agreement with Tony Stewart to say, hey, I think it was in December, Tony Stewart purchased the TQ Midget Series. He probably wanted some sort of ladder system to the all-star sprint car so you could learn as you go. Or maybe that was pitched from the developer. Maybe that's the inverse. But whatever's going on here, it, the TQ Midgets and the 305 sprint cars are not compelling in my opinion. I think we would have actually been better off to get just the all-star, the 410 sprint cars. Just my two cents, We you could have charged 20 to 25 bucks and just given us the sprint car experience and it would have been perfectly okay because I actually like the 410 sprint cars for what they are. Even though you are not counter steering, uh, it does kind of give you the idea of what you're supposed to do with these cars. You don't want to get them too crossed up. You want to have some smaller wheel movements, especially on the bigger tracks, uh, smaller steering wheel movements, I mean on the bigger tracks. Uh, you're trying to be smooth, you're trying to be aggressive, uh, keep your momentum up. So it employs those things in the physics. It's, again, there's just other things that you just kind of have to get used to what it's doing. Not a huge deal, it's just something that I'd like to see improved. When racing the AI, however, it's can be a very mixed bag. Sometimes you get these AI that are doing crossover maneuvers with you and it's really awesome. Other times they get these like odd speed boosts coming out of the corner. It's very bizarre looking and they take odd lines around the track. Now part of that is because of how large, how wide the tracks are. Uh, the other part is just the programming of the AI and coming from again somebody with experience, a very limited experience in messing with and programming AI uh, in Sims. I get how difficult it is to do this. Not only is it hard to do oval AI, it's incredibly difficult to do dirt AI. It's not horrible, but it does become frustrating because the, the fast line typically is around the bottom of the track, especially in the TQs and the 305s. The 410 sprint cars seem to spread out a little more, but it means that there's a lot of beat, beating and banging trying to get to the bottom of the track. Having them charge in hard slow in the center and then accelerate quickly off the corner means that you have a hard time making a clean pass in a lot of those scenarios unless you are just decidedly faster than everybody else what typically happens is you carry a lot of center corner speed and it just makes for an odd balance your line is typically not the line that they're running it it, it just needs some work because the ai can be very frustrating to race against and especially when you have to hit the brake in a TQ or a 305 and so theoretically you're going as slow as them now in the center of the corner and then they just burst away from you coming off the corner I don't know it just it just gets frustrating the AI could use some major improvement uh, 410 doesn't seem to be as bad but the TQ and the 305s I just I really don't like since I've touched on the tracks let's get to the art style the tracks themselves are actually cool because they're reminiscent of again dirt to daytona that kind of thing that does not bother me at all it doesn't even bother me that they're not officially licensed tracks like this is kind of the beauty of this type of racing you don't really have to do officially licensed stuff uh, it's nice if you do but you could make tracks and just say here you go kind of what they've done here except i get it they're trying to make everything not seem so boring so there's some unique tracks. I don't mind the unique tracks as one-offs, but there's a lot of tracks in here that have dog legs and, and odd configurations. And again, the AI doesn't work well with that. Tracks, again, a lot of them, not all, are too wide, create some odd lines and some odd racing things that you would not see. I get it, we're trying to make it so people don't crash all the time, but I think you take away some of the excitement level from these lower classes, especially because the tracks aren't tight enough it is great however that we get different times of day and especially we're racing at different times a day like with the tq midgets and stuff there are some daytime races like that's that's pretty cool like i like that kind of variation i also like to see 
that the visual surface of the track is changing. That's a plus. What I found in the setups, I guess we'll kind of jump to setups now, is that throughout the night, a track should get more slick, unless in the rare instance, I know I'm going to get those people out there, well, my track doesn't get slick throughout the night. Look, I've raced out here in California at tracks that are close to the coast. I understand that. High water table, and especially if the, the tide comes in, the track can actually get more sticky, more tacky as the night goes on. But that's not the norm. Usually, tracks don't get more tacky as they go throughout the night. What happens here is the tracks get more tacky throughout the night. You actually, if you're using the generic slider, the, the tight to loose slider in the setup, you want to keep bumping it to the loose uh, because the cars will just be too planted on the left rear and you'll actually start losing a lot of time later in the night when it should be the inverse. You should be wanting more left rear drive or at least be able to carry more speed throughout the corner, which means you're typically tightening the car up. So it's kind of backward, not a deal breaker, but you just have to remember it's kind of the inverse of what you should be expecting, especially if you have any experience with dirt track racing. The interesting thing was I tried using a quarter mile setup with the 410 sprint car and it actually reacted decent. We don't get the wing over effect that you would in a sprint car where you're driving hard into the corner and it pins the left side of the car down. That kind of looks goofy when it lays over in the right rear, but whatever. Again, not a huge deal. But what I did find interesting is I pretty much put my setup in that car that I would start with at the beginning of the night for like qual hot laps and qualifying and it actually worked but as the night went on I found I needed to actually loosen the car up more and more instead of what I would consider tightening the car giving it more bite to the rear uh, just because uh, the way it goes through the night is inverted at least to me and there's one other thing to note there's no wing slider again not a big deal but I thought I'd mention that as well I just thought of it to sum up this part the settings for the car actually everything's here this is what you would do to set up a real car so it's nice that they've got this in here the only criticism I have is um, steering offset I it's not at least we never mess with that and I don't know too many people that ever mess with a quote-unquote steering offset and even if you do mess with this you still don't counter steer the car going through the corner so it's kind of like a moot point at that at that time so you can get to the nitty-gritty and dial in the car I don't know if it makes a huge difference versus just using the slider the only thing I noted was the gearing seems to be a little better when you do it yourself all right let's get to career mode career mode has some awesome aspects to it you can do it just like the heat series where you can either start in the TQ midgets or you can just start at whatever series you want which is nice I would say don't really bother with the TQ or the 305s because they are so woefully slow to begin with. It's very, very frustrating. And if you put it up at if you were good at this game and you put it up to a high level, you're barely sniffing the back of a 40 car field. And that's not usually how this works. These cars are produced where they're you're not doing a lot of backyard innovation you can you can buy all the parts for these cars and what it usually comes down to is setup and then driver skill uh, you're going to get some variations in horsepower and shocks stuff like that but like tires usually there are spec tires or there's a couple options for tires uh, so we're going to get some options in here and i really like the aspect of building my car up but the disparity between the low end and the high end to me is too too much it's too far uh, i would like to run at a high skill level and you know struggle to make the middle of the b sniff the back of the aiming that kind of thing uh, where i just find that it's just way too difficult especially with the ai the way they are uh, to start at a high skill level at the bottom end of where these cars start it, it's just it makes it very frustrating and it prolongs the experience which i don't think needs to happen again i like i really like the idea of building your car up i even like the idea of being in a tq midget going from a 305 i wish those were more fun and exciting to drive but let's say they were 
I really like that idea of going from the TQ to the 305 to the 410 all-star sprint cars. Let's make the focus more on maybe getting a little bit better engine, maybe getting a little bit better shock package, and then working on your setup and your driving to make the difference in procuring more money and procuring another car at the end of the year. So what happens is you start in TQ. If you do well enough in these showcases, again, great idea. You can get sponsors that allow you to get sponsorship for the next tier up car, which TQ to 305, 305 to 410. To wrap this up, do I think Tony Stewart sprint car racing is worth buying? If you're a huge dirt track racing fan, more than likely, especially in the sprint car side, yes. For all of its flaws, it's still a fun title. Where this game to me shines is running like a championship with the 410 sprint cars. I really enjoy it. It does a good job of making it feel incredibly quick. Uh, lots to pay attention to, but also at the same time learning how to be smooth. All those things you need when driving a sprint car is to be aggressive, but be smooth, take care of your equipment, uh, deal with the track changing throughout the night. So you're getting the basic idea of how to drive a sprint car. And I think that's where it shines. Art could be better. I'd like to see better scaling. Let's let's fix some of that. I'd like to see the AI improved because they're hit and miss quite a bit. But $30, $30 for this title is well worth it if you're a sprint car or dirt track racing fan. Especially on the console side, you guys have been starred for it for a long time. I do think this is a good game. It's not great. And hopefully this has given them an infusion of cash to possibly iterate on this and make it even better the next go around. They probably didn't have a lot of time. All these things I understand and realize. And again, I'm not looking for it to be a simulation. I actually think that the while there are things that I would change, the handling model isn't really that bad. Like, it's actually fun to just kind of race the 410 sprint cars. All right, that's going to do it for my review of Tony Seward's Sprint Car Racing. I will be doing a follow-up live stream with this game, so if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, you can come into the live stream and we can talk about it. I'm going to show off a few things that maybe I didn't get a chance to cover, or maybe that you know I didn't cover as in-depth as I wanted to. So be on the lookout for that. Other than that, you all have been great. I've been strange. Take care, and I will catch you in the next video.